In fact, as hard as it is to believe, what is now Lake Superior was once covered by a couple of thousand feet of ice. I'm standing here on the north shore of Lake Superior in Minnesota. And in Minnesota and other northern states, you have lots of evidence for a past ice age. And in fact, as hard as it is to believe, what is now Lake Superior was once covered by a couple of thousand feet of ice. So how do you explain an ice age? And there's two major schools of thought. Uniformitarians would argue that present day processes are sufficient to explain an ice age. Catastrophists, on the other hand, would say that you need something truly out of the ordinary to make an ice age happen. And creationists have come up with a little acrostic to help summarize the key points of our ice age model, and that acrostic is heat. The H stands for hot oceans, because during the Genesis flood, there would have been rapid seafloor spreading, and a lot of hot material would have come up from the Earth's interior and would have greatly warmed the world's oceans 10, 20, maybe 30 degrees Celsius. And as a result of that, you're gonna have an enormous amount of evaporation from the ocean surface. And that's what the E stands for, evaporation. That puts an enormous amount of moisture into the atmosphere. And you're gonna get a lot of precipitation, including snow at high latitudes and on mountaintops. But you still have to keep that snow and ice from melting during the summer. And that's where the A comes in. A stands for aerosols. Aerosols are tiny droplets or particles. And you get these from big, explosive, sulfur-rich volcanic eruptions, particularly subduction volcanic eruptions. And so you end up with these aerosols, particularly sulfuric acid droplets in the stratosphere, they reflect sunlight and you get colder summers. We've actually seen this happen after big eruptions like Mount Pinatubo in 1991. And so that's going to give you the colder summers to keep the snow and ice from melting and that enables thick ice sheets to build up over time. The T stands for time. That's the other thing you need for an ice age. And I'm not talking about just time in general, but I'm specifically talking about the Bible's short time scale. Both uniformitarians and catastrophists would acknowledge that volcanic cooling is a real thing. It could potentially contribute to an ice age, but uniformitarians cannot make good use of volcanic cooling because they insist based on their philosophy that these volcanic eruptions were separated by millions of years. And therefore, any cooling effect you get is going to be so diluted, it's not really going to do anything. But if you have hundreds of sulfur-rich subduction volcanoes erupting within a few hundred years, you have an extremely potent mechanism for an ice age. And so it's the Genesis flood. This is the key that ties everything together. The rapid seafloor spreading, the rocks and fossils, the ice age, and it also is why we don't have to worry about another ice age occurring because God has promised us there will never again be another global flood. And without another global flood, you can't have another ice age.